I'm just at the end of a terrific day in Manchester talking about asset-based community development and community building. And um, one of the people I was talking to was Karina Milner, and I've just met up also with Andy McDermott. And they're both um, community mobilizers in Milton Keynes. And I thought, hey, we're also on another project doing some work in Milton Keynes on uh, use of media and multicultural neighborhoods, and we got chatting on, and Karina said, oh, and have you heard about our app? <laughs> wow. So I said, well, I know that Linda Quinn in uh, People Power Change uh, Big Lottery Fund is really interested in that. Um, so give us a little preview. Well, I don't know if you could get the phone Yeah, I can, I can, out, I can, I can get the phone out, definitely. Come One on of then. the challenges um, of being a mobiliser, and a lot of what we spoke about today is about um, conversations, and that they're actually the juice of um, the work that we do and how do we get those stories out and across and harness the power of those stories. Um, as mobilisers, we average possibly about five conversations a day um, and that's a lot to make a note of on bits of paper and whatnot and to keep up with that and following those up, those positive follow-ups. So we have designed, well, we haven't designed. Some very clever people at Grey Matter have designed this based on our feedback and what we get from the residents in day-to-day -day interactions with them, as Andy is demonstrating. <laughs> it's a very long password. Do, because of data protection, we have to enter our passwords. But what it allow, allows us to do is capture residents, people who live in those communities, their ideas, their issues and their interests. And it helps us uh, um, enable them to come up with answers quickly. Sometimes it's other services. Sometimes it might be themselves. Sometimes it might be us as organisations within those communities who can help them realise and make some of those uh, um, ideas <coughs> and issues become a reality. It, um, uh, it's a quick way of capturing the conversation so it, so it doesn't uh, stop the flow of the conversation. The conversation is the most important thing you know, that, that the residents feel that they are being listened to. But the app allows us to capture that because it can get lost. We've mm -hmm. all got brains that it can fall out of very quickly. And that information can then be, uh, be used in a, in a practical way for that, for that, for that resident. Um, and it's important we, uh, we get back to them quickly on it as well. So their, their ideas, their issues, interests are listened to. Um, and uh, they might not be acted on straight away, but they need to know that something is, 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 is in place. We also like to capture impact stories, kind of stories that we've been hearing about on, the, on this two-day course uh, at workshop. Um, you know, the importance of what changes have happened in their, their lives. And it's important that it's their lives that we're talking about as, as residents within the communities we work. So um, give me a little um, example of how this, of how this uh, might work. Um, you, you're talking to some um, an individual resident or a, a community group, and they come up with an idea or an issue, a problem or whatever. What do you do? Um, well, yeah, whatever it is they come up with, we think that mostly it does fit into these four eyes or our kind of golden eyes, which is ideas, interest, issues, and impact. Um, which is uh, I think Andy's demonstrating. Okay. <laughs> Um, we can then note Cruise these creation. engagements down, but these are the the categories that we think they fall into. Um, and this allows us then to look back at it, or not us, but our um, David Livermore, our assistant chief executive, can then look at this on a dashboard and he will see this in real time. So he can pick out themes in an area. Um, if for some reason they, um, Andy and Wes Fletchley is picking up that there's a lot of employment issues, that will be flagged. So we can start to. So what content cater. you 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 pops up into um, one of the four I categories, mm -hmm. and you can add a, a little text dialogue That's there. Right. Just add some dialogue. So it can you be can a add photo. photo. So yeah. residents talking to you about some issues in their in their area that they would like some improvements or uh, uh, some issues that they need to report to uh, people who can help them make uh, the changes. We can take photos and tag that. And then we can also um, action it, and there, there will soon be a brand new button mm -hmm. on here as well that will enable us to, uh, as well as put in action email to one of our contacts, that there's a drop down list, and that will ping, in a very technical term, mm -hmm. to the uh, uh, to the person who can uh, uh, who can do something about it. And we set action dates for ourselves so we can, uh, you know, most importantly get back to that resident that that it doesn't just sit there as a piece of paperwork.
and it doesn't just sit there unused. Fantastic. Does this tie up with any other systems that you may be using or community groups may be using? Or maybe that's something for the future? It's something, I think that's something for the future. I think um, um, at the moment the way it works is that um, the, the, um, the app is, is collecting information. I can see uh, residents recording these things for themselves eventually and passing that to you know, whoever can make the decisions, or you know, and show others. I, I, you know, I think they're eventually, if they're if they're doing that that process themselves, um, you know, they, they'll eventually get things done quicker. I think some of the people said it over this uh, last two days that, um, you know, quite often um, we we try and find the resource outside of the place we live when when uh, um, you know it could probably get solved very quickly from within. You know, just asking around, having nosy neighbours. So this could tie into, well, obviously it'll tie into community mobilising because that's what you're doing. Yeah. You'll also think about how this ties into community network building and so on. Definitely. So you be it's looking essentially at, yeah. a way of asset mapping, really, and but making sure we're keeping all of that in one place and it doesn't get lost, as Andy said, because then what use is that to anybody? Yeah. Um, but it's also a way of making sure, like with local authorities, for, we'll use the Community Foundation as an example since we're here today with them. Um, if for some reason a resident flags up, I'd like to do this on the ground, but I need some money, and it's then connected back to the community foundation, that could go straight into the app, and I could send that off as a request straight away while I'm talking to that person. So there's action, and that's very important for residents. So at the moment, can I get this on the iPhone app store? Well, it's coming. It is coming. We're still in the process stage. It's still a little bit buggy, and we're, we're using it on the ground to see how that will work. Um, because obviously you don't know until you start testing it in a real life situation. Um, but it's not just the app, the local authority can tap into it and they may say to us, right guys, 12 mobilisers across priority areas in Milton Keynes for a month we'd like you to look at. And they would essentially, they wouldn't have to necessarily buy the whole app, but they could get a report based back on that and it'd be real live information um, from that month. It wouldn't be stale sort of questionnaires, old out of date survey data. I mean, I think that's, that's fantastically exciting. I, I, I was at a, um, an event the other day, um, a business event about collaboration, and uh, one of the presenters, uh, Steve Dale, said, uh, the future is mobile and the future is appified. And you know, I, I understood what he was talking about. I blogged it, and I'm not sure a lot of other people did. But this, that's what you're doing, isn't it? I mean, is this, this is a way to do it, um, not just for officers, community mobilizers, but do you think this is the way that people are actually going to prefer to use technology in future? This is the world we're living in. If we don't keep up with that and the way people connect with each other and communicate with each other, we'll be left behind. And it's an important time for the community and voluntary sector. And we need to be forward thinking and um, hopefully one step ahead, not just keeping up, but one step ahead. And I think this is one way of doing it. Absolutely. I think that the, the, to embrace the technology is very, very important. But uh, I, I don't think it'll ever replace the kind of what we're, what, what, what we're talking about. It's about real people. But if technology can help us enable people to do better things, then, yeah, I, the, the, the use of apps are, are, can be very, very important. And I think this one is an example of where it could work well because it's, you know, it, at the heart of what it's trying to do is about people, and that's the most important thing. As long as, it, as, long as technology can aid that, then we're on to a winner. And just um, finally, um, Big Lottery Fund's thinking about where to go with their people-powered change ideas. Already in the middle of that is asset-based community development, but it's how to fill that out and how to scale that up on a national level. Is there anything that you think uh, Big Lottery could do here to help you test, evolve, share this? I think in terms, no, not necessarily uh, uh, just big lottery, but I think, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a thing that can be, uh, can be tested and used throughout um, the nation, really, in terms of, like, uh, on the ground working as a direct, um, you know, way of communicating with people. I think that's the best way. I'm not quite sure where, where it would go in terms of uh, um, sort of uh, uh, bigger funding and things like that. Um, you know, I can only talk from my experience on the ground what I see uh, from the ground up. But that's that. Uh, I, I think that it could be repeated wherever you uh, wherever you go, because I think the same issues affect the same people in the same communities.